He said, I'll love you and I'll die. So on the cross, Jesus gave his life. He put the pain and flesh aside. To save the world, he paid the price. On the cross, his blood was shed. A plan that had to be complete. A crown of thorns placed on his head. Nails through his hands and through his feet. A spear was driven in his side. Oh, the blood and water flowed. It's finished, Jesus cried. He paid a debt he did not owe. The sky turned dark, the clouds were gray. The soldiers fell in deep disgrace. But as they carried him away, a look of love was on his face. Jesus gave his life that day. His blood and grace has set me free. He took the sting of death away. He sacrificed his life that day. He was placed in a tomb. They rolled a stone to block the door. The angels came. The stone was moved. He's alive forevermore. Jesus gave his life that day. His blood and grace has Sacrifice his life that day. Jesus gave his life that day. His blood and grace has set me free. He took the sting of death away. He sacrificed his life that day. Well, Scott's going to come and minister to us, and uh, I know he's excited about what I've been calling his heart, and so am I. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. This mic is hot. Gosh. Y'all know how loud I talk. Um, <clears throat> George forgot his hearing aids today, so he asked me to be loud. I think this mic is pretty loud. Um, so Tim said that there was many scriptures on healing in the word. According to Google, if you believe what they have to say, there's 171 scriptures on healing. I looked that up this morning before I came. But the most important thing is there were 39 stripes that Jesus took for our healing. Uh, and that was over 2,000 years ago. And I don't think that they knew medically that there were 39 categories of diseases. There's um, uh, That's... I read that in a medical journal this morning also. So that's just a bit of information for you that you might want to know. And also, as Pastor Tim has been preaching on heaven, I was in my hotel room in Indiana and I was thinking about the message and I had a message. I had a good message. It, Lord, just give me something as I was going up and down the road for several weeks. Man, I've been playing that thing over in my mind, and I said, man, this thing sounds so good, and I've been preaching it to myself, and it was just so great. And then Monday of this past week, I'm in my hotel room in Indiana, and I was just thinking about the message, and you ever had one of them moments that you just feel like somebody just jumped into bed with you? 
And I looked over and, um, boy, that's better. <laughs> and, and not only did the Lord say, uh, you can forget about that message for now, maybe later, but he also said how he wanted me to present this message and who he, who he asked me to help pray during this message. So at the end of the message, there's going to be a couple of guys to come up and going to help in prayer. And also what specifically that they uh, should be praying for. Um, so if you think you just got up this morning and decided we'll go up to the Christian Fellowship, we'll go up to Tim's church. You might have thought that in your mind, but I think you were directed by the Holy Spirit because I believe that each and every one that gets up today and makes their way here to this altar, as you make the steps to get up, I think the Lord's going to touch and heal you before we ever have an opportunity to pray for you. That happened to me one time, and I just want to share it again. I've shared it before with you. But I was about 13 years old, and I had just recently given my heart to the Lord, and I didn't know too much about God, and I really I doubted His existence, to be honest with you. I, I, I didn't really know. I, I just knew that my mother had recently given her heart to the Lord, and I, I said to him, if, if I see a change in my mom, I think about conversion myself. Well, the change that I saw in my mom, she didn't have anything to give up. She didn't have habits like I did. She didn't cuss and she didn't act crazy and all that. And, but I did and she didn't. And she, the love for Jesus Christ that she had, that's, that's what got a hold of my heart. Listening to her pray at night. We had a 900 square foot house. It was hard not to talk anywhere in the house that you couldn't hear. Matter of fact, we could hear the neighbor. You know, they were that close. So to hear her pray and pray for other people and, and to just express her love for Jesus Christ, boy, conviction just come all over me. And I asked her to pray with me one night, and she did. And I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. But I lost the hearing in my right ear, and I went to a... Um, I got invited to a church. Boy, we go in there, and it's the first time I ever seen a set of drums and a guitar and a trumpet and a preacher that was on fire for God. And man, they started worshiping God. And I mean, we were just getting into it, and I was just grabbing that chair that I was standing in front of just as hard as I could. And all of a sudden, the preacher just threw his hands up like that, and everybody quit playing. It got deathly silent. He said, There's somebody in here that's having trouble hearing out of your right ear. And um, he said, I don't want anybody looking around. And he said, and guess what? He said, the Lord just dropped into my heart that you don't really think he exists. You're, you're not really sure about this God that you're in here worshiping tonight. And he said, but he wants to touch you. And he said, and, 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 he said, and, and to even further let you know who you are, he said, you're on the third row and you're in the ninth seat over. I'm the only one that's looking around, and I'm counting rows. And I knew it was me. I already, and he even said, and you already know it's you. And I thought, oh, God, I just got finished counting the seats. But, yeah, that's me. And he said, and God just wants to let you know that he loves you, and he's real. And that's what this healing service is about today. God loves you, and he's real. And he wants to take away what's been bothering you. I don't care how long it's been bothering you. He wants to take it away today. And as this man prayed, it just felt like that warm wax just ran all the way down from my ear to the floor to the point that I looked down to see if there was anything in the floor. That's how it felt. No person touched me except for Jesus Christ. And about 15 years later or so, I went to a job one time and I had to have a hearing test and she said, wow, you hear perfect out of your right ear and you lose a little hearing out of your left ear. Any reason for that? And I said, yeah, God's never touched and healed my left ear yet. <laughs> and she looked at me like I lost my mind. So did the doctor who had said you need to go to a specialist next week over in Charlotte and had already set up an appointment for us. And my mother took me back to that doctor in Landis and said, would you look at his ear? Because for some reason he can hear. We didn't tell him the reason just yet. He looked into my ear and he backed up and he dropped his utensil and he said, what happened? And I said, Jesus touched and healed me. And he said, get out of here. I left and didn't ever go back. 
because I thought that meant get out of here, period. So I didn't have a doctor for a long time. So we relied on Jesus when we needed something. I'm asking you to rely on Jesus. And this is sort of what was said to me. I, you know, I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't like changing messages. <laughs> and he said, yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit likes to deal with people. <laughs> and you don't know who's going to be in that audience. And I already do. And he said, I want you to talk a little bit about healing. Just a little bit. Then let me work in their midst. And so Tim's been talking about heaven, and that's great. And he's going to, after Mother's Day next week, the next several weeks, he's going to speak a few more messages about heaven. But the Lord said to me, I want you to live now and be complete and be whole while you're here on this earth. And he paved the way for us when he was on his way to the cross. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 says, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Jesus wants to move us from unbelief to belief. He invites us to trust God. Beginning with the most simple things in life. There's one person I really was hoping was going to be here because I knew the Lord had something for him. But you know what? That's not my part of the job. My part of the job is give the message. And Jesus wants to move us from unbelief to belief, and he invites us to trust God. Jesus knows how hard it is to have faith during the trying times. We're a mixture of unbelief and belief. We believe that God is. We believe that God exists. But yet we're timid in believing that God can bring about a healing and a peace in our life. We see evidence of God's wonderful creation. But yet we find it difficult to see how God works in our hurt and in our pain. Jesus wants us to deepen our trust in God. He wants us to come to God sooner than we ever do with our requests and our needs. But guess what? It's not a surprise to God. Jesus wants us to know that God's desire is to help us, and he's able to do just that. Such faith like that is a gift. It's not anything that's earned. We don't earn God's help. We don't earn his favor. This type of gift is offered before we're even aware that we have needs sometimes in our life. We simply turn and receive from Jesus. We let go of it and let God have it. And you say, well, that's, that's easy said. But is it really hard to do? Faith is not some system of knowledge that we have to master. Rather, it's a way of trusting. Faith is a way of living with that small measure of confidence that we have in God. And as we follow God's lead in life, we can know that without a doubt, He is going to provide all that you need along the way. This was something that my mother was so good at teaching. I wished I had the faith that she had. And I always pray that I have that faith that she had. She had faith in everything. We were what you would consider dirt poor. My mother never let me know that. I thought we were middle class Americans. I thought we were middle class citizens until I was about 17 years old and they give a list of the 
poverty level and we didn't even make the poverty level in America. We weren't making what was considered poverty in America. I said, Mama, are we poor? <laughs> she said, what'd you think we were? And I said, well, we've always had everything we need. And she said, that's because God provided everything we need. She said, son, we're poor. And it's, that stuck a drive in me. I wanted to work and I wanted to save and I wanted to keep every penny I could and find and everything else. And I, but she said, it doesn't matter what you have, son. It matters if you let God be God in your life and let him provide what you need. And when you do that, then you're rich. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply, shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Words that are as ever bit as true today as they were when they were penned in the scripture because God is still in the business of providing for his children. Isaiah 26.4 says, Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord, Jehovah, is everlasting strength. You know, we trust in the Lord a lot of times, and then when things get bad and things go sour and things just get pitiful, we lose our job, we, we lose property, we lose our house, we, we repossess your car, and all of a sudden you feel like you have nothing, that faith in God dwindles. We, we try to find other sources and other means of, of happiness and help and hope. And, and the word says, trust in the Lord always, forever, because he's, he's your only help. He's your only hope. Maybe you're here today and, and this fits you today. I'm not feeling myself lately. Anybody ever said it? My body is betraying me. My mind is weary and it's tired. The stressors of life are exhausting me, and I can't cope another day without the deep healing that only God can provide in my life. Will you cast your burdens, your sickness, and your pain upon God today and find rest and renewal in Him? Sorry. The healing and comfort that only God can give happens on such a deep level that our spirit, our mind, and our hearts feel it. Our physical body returns to a state of vigor and strength. Anybody need that today? Anybody need a little vigor and a little strength today? Anybody weak because of the things that's been happening in your body and the sickness and the pain and the suffering and the things that have been going on? This is why you're here today. But we feel an even deeper shift in our souls when God does his wonderful miracle through us. To heal only the body would be incomplete in most of us. The Lord needs to heal all of us through and through. We need that healing in our mind and in our soul. We need a new mindset. Some of us have been beaten down so far in life and so much and for so long that we think that's normal. That's not a normal way to live. That's not happiness. That's not that joy unspeakable that Jesus spoke about. So we need a new mindset. And some of us have been sick so long, we don't know how to live without that pain. We don't know how to live without the suffering. We've been sick so long that we get up expecting that leg to hurt. We get up expecting that back to hurt. And if we don't, we go looking around for it. Where's that at? Where, where, what, what happened to that back pain? What, my, my leg's moving like it's supposed to? What? Now, now just, just yesterday, that thing was swelled up, and it was hurting, and it was sore, and I couldn't hardly walk. Now, what happened? And i tell you one thing. That thing will catch up with you because the devil will make sure of it. 
We need a new mindset. Our mind needs to change. The Lord needs to heal all of us, right? Our body, soul, mind, our spirit. He needs to heal it all. Well, guess what? He's going to take that opportunity here in just a couple of minutes because that's what he wants to do. Think, of, think about, you know, in the scripture, it, it talks about the little lady that pressed through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment. Well, we don't have to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ. He wants us to reach up and just grab a hold of him. He wants us to grab a hold of him and to take that healing that belongs to us. I, I asked him. Because I'm like Tim. Why, why do we pray sometimes, Lord, to you and we ask you and then we're not healed? And so I said to him, I said, Lord, did you take those stripes in vain? I mean, were you just playing? When those Roman soldiers beat you, is that, was that just a joke? Or did you take those stripes for my healing? Because I'm sick and I need your healing. These doctors are just not cutting it. The medicine they're giving me is not working. I have issues. And I want to be healed. And you said I can be. And remember when he went to the pool and he asked the man, he said, What's going on, pal? And the man goes, Well, every time the water's troubled, somebody else jumps in in front of me. Well, guess what? Nobody has to trouble the water for us. Jesus paid that price for us. He took those stripes for us. But you know, they said that man had been there for, I don't know, 30-something years with his infirmity. And we know he was sick. And we know there were other people sick there too. But Jesus concentrated on this one man this time. And he looked at him and he said, Do you want to be healed? <laughs> Why would he ask him that? Because the man woke up every day knowing he was sick, knowing he had his sick bed laying right there. So Jesus wanted to make sure. And see, this is where our part comes in. Do you want to be healed? Is there a reason you're holding on to your sickness, your pain, your suffering? Do you enjoy it? I mean, Jesus is asking these legitimate questions when he asked the man at the pool do you want to be healed? The man said, yeah, but I ain't got nobody to put me in the water. And Jesus said, I'm not talking about the water. Take up your bed, go on about your business. And the man was healed. And he took his sick bed up and he took off with it. He was out of there. He didn't want to lay at that pool anymore. Are you done? Are you finished with your sickness? Have you had enough? Or do you want to hold on to it? But some people want to hold on to it. They like that disability money. You know? They like to be a little crazy in their mind. Gives them benefits at work. People don't bother them so much if they act like they don't know what they're doing. Well, that's not the way I want to live, and that's not the way Jesus wants you to live. He took those stripes for our healing. He went all the way to the cross so that he could take care of our every need. And you know, regardless of what it is, God is here today to meet our needs. And that's all the message he gave me. So he wants to do something in our life. Can somebody run down and ask Rick to come up? Ask Rick to come up, please. Thank you, Tim. I've asked uh, Pastor David if he'll come. Pastor David's going to stand right over here. And listen to me. If you've got any kind of conditions with your heart or with your lungs, I want you to come and let David pray with you this morning. And if you would, just come around that side of the wall, and that way you line up with David over here. And I've asked Pastor Rick to come. Pastor Rick's going to stand right over here on this side. And... Um, He's going to pray for all the people that have any kind of sugar diabetes, any kind of blood cancer, any kind of blood clots, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, anything that has to do with your blood, Rick's going to pray for you right over here. And I've asked Pastor Tim. Amen. 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 He's the one that's going to do it. And I've asked Pastor Tim to come. And I've asked Pastor Tim if, if he'll stand right here at this side of the middle aisle. And he's going to pray for anybody that's here today that's dealing with depression, 
dealing with migraine headaches, regular headaches, dementia, loss of your mind or the memory of any kind, any kind of darkness or any kind of heaviness that exists in your life, he's going to pray for you. Then I'm here to pray for anybody that has any kind of relationship problems, habits that you're looking to break today, such as pornography, foul mouth, you don't like the language that's coming out of your mouth, the drinking of wine or beer or liquor, smoking a pot or cigarettes. If you want to be delivered of any of these things, I'm telling you, as you get up and head this way, the Lord is already going to be there with you. And he's already going to deliver you. We're just going to pray with you in agreement, Because we don't want anybody to leave here today that's not freed from all of the things that have been binding you and keeping you from being used by God. As we get saved... This should be our whole goal. The Bible says those that win souls are wise. Well, it's hard for you to win a soul if you're bound by sickness, disease, mental illness, or any other kind of problems. But when you're freed, it's easy for you to tell about that love that Jesus had for you. And you can share that with other people. Pastor. Thank you. Would y'all come? Excuse me. Would y'all come and line up with with these folks? We'll look at them. They're here. David. David. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.